uh, in this video let's understand the differences between non-rapid eye movement and the rapid eye movement sleep so the first point is of course the eye movements no prizes for guessing in the non-rapid eye movement sleep the eye movements are not rapid and in the rapid eye movement sleep the eye movements are rapid next let's understand as to what are the differences with respect to the eeg that is the electroencephalogram now there are four stages which come under the non-rapid eye movement sleep the stage 1, stage 2, stage 3 and the stage 4. In the stage 1, we encounter a low amplitude and a high frequency waves. Then when we enter into the stage 2 of sleep, we see two characteristic features in the NREM sleep. These are called as the sleep spindles and the K complexes. Now when we enter into the stage 3 of sleep, the low amplitude and the high frequency waves which we saw in the stage 1 they change to low frequency and a high amplitude waves now when we enter into the stage 4 that is the deeper stages of sleep what we see is that the frequency has become very low that is the lowest frequency and the amplitude has become maximum these are called as the delta waves now because of the lowest frequency the nrem sleep is also called as a slow wave sleep let's see what are the changes which take place with respect to the eeg in the rem sleep in the rem sleep there is no stages the only thing that we see is that the waves are very high frequency and they are low amplitude even though the waves are high frequency and low amplitude the threshold for arousal in this sleep is very high that means a person cannot be aroused easily because of which this sleep is also called as paradoxical sleep a very very important point because sometimes in your exams they will just ask you paradoxical sleep so if they have asked you paradoxical sleep that means you are supposed to write regarding the REM sleep sometimes they will ask you slow wave sleep so if they are asking you regarding the slow wave sleep right regarding the NREM sleep now there is one more thing which we see in the REM sleep which are called as the PGO spikes so what are these PGO spikes large phasic potentials in a group of 3 to 5 they originate in the pons and from the pons they move to the lateral geniculate body and from the lateral geniculate body these phasic potentials they move to the occipital cortex these are the one which are called as the pgo spikes what is the full form of this pgo p stands for pontine g stands for geniculate body and o stands for occipital cortex and these pgo spikes are not seen in nrem sleep next let's see what happens to the muscle tone the muscle tone is reduced in nrem sleep the muscle tone reduces further in rem sleep that means there is a state of hypotonia in nrem sleep and this hypotonia is increasing when the person enters into the rem sleep what happens to the heart rate respiratory rate and the blood pressure all these three parameters are reduced in nrem sleep what happens to them in REM sleep? In the REM sleep, they become pretty irregular. In the NREM sleep, the person of course can be aroused. In the REM sleep, the arousal becomes very very difficult. Now what happens to the BMR and the oxygen consumption? The BMR and the oxygen consumption are also reduced in case of NREM sleep, whereas the basal metabolic rate and the oxygen consumption is increased in case of REM sleep. Now, there are few other important differences which we should understand between the NREM and the REM sleep. In the NREM sleep, there is a pulsatile secretion of GHRH. So, what is this GHRH? This is nothing but growth hormone releasing hormone that is why we say that the children should sleep so when the children sleep that is when the growth is going to occur so remember that pulsatile secretion of ghrh occurs in the nrem sleep two more events one is called as sleep walking which is also referred to as somnambulism 
This occurs only in NREM sleep and also nocturnal enuresis, which is nothing but bed wetting, okay, which is nothing but uh, micturation in the sleep. Even this is going to occur in the NREM sleep. So, what occurs in the REM sleep? In the REM sleep, we encounter that there is going to be a penile and the clitoral engorgement. We also see that there is bruxism. What is the meaning of bruxism? Bruxism means tooth grinding. This occurs when you are angry on somebody, you begin to grind your teeth or tooth. But this is also seen in REM sleep. A very, very important point. Dreams occur both in NREM as well as REM. But remember that in REM sleep, the dreams can be recalled very vividly. So that is why REM sleep is also called as dream sleep. And remember one more important thing that nightmares also occur in REM sleep. So these are the important differences between NREM and REM sleep. Thanks for watching.